makes you a hero. So I understand the rage. I wouldn't lose sleep if something were to happen to George Zimmerman. I wouldn't lose sleep if something were to happen to Darren Wilson, the cop who killed Michael Brown, the cop who did an interview expressing no remorse whatsoever for the killing of Michael Brown. So I understand the rage. I empathize with the rage. And I feel this call for action. You know, the people that we're taught to respect in this society, you know, the people that we're taught are patriots. They didn't sit back being nonviolent. They didn't sit back reflecting on the odds and, you know, talking about practicality and such. They engaged in action. They engaged in a revolutionary struggle against their enemy. Their slogan was freedom or death. They gave their life for freedom. And we celebrate their sacrifice. On the 4th of July, we celebrate it. We celebrate the sacrifice of soldiers who fought in World War I and World War II and even the Civil War. We celebrate that stuff. We're taught that they're heroes for fighting for freedom. But yet we don't have the courage to fight. We don't have the courage. We come up with all kinds of reasons not to fight. So I understand the minister's call for retaliation. I understand it very well and I, I feel his message. But Yvette Carnell raises some very practical and intelligent points that should be discussed. It definitely should be discussed. Because when you think about it, are we really prepared to engage in that kind of struggle? We can't even get people to organize around issues that involve making changes within the political system. We can't even get people on the same page about economic boycotts or about legislation, things that we can actually do and things that we can actually change. If we can't organize in a nonviolent fashion, I mean, and there are many that are organizing effectively well, we can't even get these people to pass an act in Congress against racial profiling. We can't even organize around something as simple as that. We can't even push Congress to enact that. You know, a Congress that's shedding tears over a dead lion, you know, that's ready to act immediately to protect lions. But when it comes to the black man, they're not willing to do a damn thing. They can sit back and let this legislation just collect dust. Legislation to fight racial profiling. Legislation for body cameras. See, we need to press these reforms. If we can't organize around these reforms and press them, then the last thing that we need to be talking about is engaging in an armed struggle at this point. And it's my understanding that he's not actually talking about an all-out race war or anything like that. He's talking about a life-for-life life retaliation. But when people take it to that level, 
you know, the enemy's response is not going to be, well, it's just that organization or it's that just that group. They're going to have a collective response. I mean, we're isolated in, in segregated communities, many of us. And being in a segregated community just means you're an easy target. When we look at how they dealt with the war on terror, the war on terror, the so-called war on terror, they sent drones all around the world to bomb people, to bomb children, to bomb women and innocent men. They dropped bombs on wedding parties. They tortured people. During World War II, they dropped nuclear bombs on Japan and killed well over 100,000 people. So if someone is going to embark down the road of retaliation, they need to be prepared for the consequences. And I don't think that the Nation of Islam is prepared for that. And I don't think at this point that we as a people are prepared for that. You know, I realize the importance of struggle. You know, I understand the historic role of revolution and bringing about change. And I don't rule out the concept of armed struggle as a principle, but I rule out stupidity. I rule out, you know, the lack of planning. And, you know, I just have, you know, a few questions about Farrakhan's statement. And, you know, I hope that he provides clarification and, you know, more information about what he was talking about. And I want to know more about this justice or else march. You know, I support, you know, a lot of the good that the nation has done. You know, I recognize the good that they've done in terms of creating businesses and schools and reforming people, um, guiding people away from drugs and violence and you know, promiscuity and all the other negative ills in society, that's commendable. That's great work. And it needs to continue. And, you know, I recognize the greatness that they have done. You know, if it wasn't for the nation, I wouldn't even know about Islam. Even though I'm not in a nation, you know, I wouldn't have knowledge of Islam. I wouldn't be a Muslim today if it wasn't for the nation. But... You know, these statements that Farrakhan made without planning, they are irresponsible statements. They simply are. Because, you know, the Nation of Islam was really about retaliation. If they were really about that, the government would have wiped them out a long time ago. Farrakhan wouldn't be on television giving um, interviews. He wouldn't be on radio programs freely giving interviews. He would be locked up or dead. You know, and members of the nation would be locked up or dead as well. So it's not about a fear of, you know, taking bold and courageous action. It's about planning. And... You know, I just think that there are other ways that we can create change in this society. You know, other constructive ways to create change. You know, you have economic boycotts that could take place. You have acts of civil disobedience that can take place. Marches and demonstrations can affect change if the people are united and not divided, if the people turn out in large numbers. 
and they put pressure on these politicians. If they demand answers from these politicians, they can affect change. And, you know, instead of, you know, just complaining about certain people who are politicians, we need more young people to actually run for office. We need more people, more progressives to run for office and to create the change that they want to see instead of complaining about the problem. So, you know, those are just my thoughts about this whole issue. Um, you know, and I welcome your feedback, your comments. Peace.